We're not in class, but a lot of people are doing this, and so I want to make this quick video to share with everyone so that when it comes to essay time, you follow sort of this format so you can develop your essays a lot more and you can really help your readers understand the material. I think a lot of good writers are really sort of translators or conduits between this very difficult kind of academic material and then it passes through you, you filter out, and then you speak the language that people understand. So here's a tip to come out of quotes a little bit better, a little bit more thoroughly. Dweck says, and by the way, I'm putting it in quotes because it's a quote. Quote, people in a fixed mindset feel measured by setbacks and mistakes. Now, we haven't talked a lot about citations, but, okay, Dweck, we don't have paragraph or page numbers, and this is a PDF file, so MLA 8 says basically to just use the author unless paragraph and page numbers are indicated, in which our case they're not. So it's just going to be that. That's the quote you pulled from the article, so what comes immediately after the quote? Let's start with an explanation of this, right? Your first step is to make sure that your reader understands what this means. You cannot move on until you've established that clarity. And by the way, when you're paraphrasing your quotes, you're also making it clear in your own mind. So I might say something like, in other words, and this sets up a paraphrase. This means I'm gonna put this in other words. In other words, if someone experiences, let's try to think of setbacks and mistakes. Someone experiences that. Now I could use those words, a setback or mistake, but I also, but I want to paraphrase a little bit. So I might say, in other words, if someone experiences failure, right? That's kind of a reasonable synonym to these keywords. In other words, if someone experiences failure, they feel measured. What does that mean? When someone experiences failure, they feel, we could use the word, they feel measured. Sometimes I'll use the word when I can't think of what else to use for now. They feel measured by that failure. And then I might add, as if they are now defined right? As if they are defined by their mistake. So now, once you have the original quote followed by a clear paraphrase or clarification or a retelling of that quote, now you've established, you know what it means, you're helping the reader understand what it means, and your next step is to further develop it with some kind of example that might help really sink this in. Here's where you could if you want to get personal, right? You can start with in my own experience, right? And then you can follow that up with a larger anecdote, or you can do as Dweck did and give examples of, um, you know, sports stars, celebrities, people in your family, like anybody who has felt measured by setback. I've had uh, students who've come out of prison use this exact quote, and that's exactly the challenge they faced was they committed some kind of crime. I'm not talking about murder or the bad stuff. You know, they stole something or boosted a car when they were a kid. And now for the rest of their life, because of that charge, right, they feel measured completely. People will measure them against their mistake and failure. Um, and so they can talk about that. So you can use yourself as an example. You can use other people as examples. You can use major celebrities, sports stars, anything you read. So the point I'm trying to make, once you use a quote, spend at least a sentence clarifying and summarizing that quote before you move on to your example and analysis. And if you do it this way, you're going to be able to take one quote and have two or three sentences after, right? And that's going to create the kind of development I think you need to both understand the material and to make that word count.